One of the challenges of a uh, patient with a white cataract or significant posterior subcapsular opacity is residual posterior capsular plaque. Uh, and this is true in this uh, patient here as well. And I've developed several elements that I've used to resolve these issues uh, in a very efficient way. As would be expected, the anterior capsule is stained with vision blue. Uh, there's very little hydrodissection that's actually done. Most of these white cataracts actually rotate fairly easily with minimal uh, dissection. A standard FACO chop is then performed. Once the pieces are created, they rather readily emulsify. Just as in any other case, it's important to keep an intact posterior capsule. Uh, the material here of the cortex can be rather sticky and fairly uh, difficult to remove because of the lack of material and the fact that it's more peripheral. Uh, we're left here with a band of fibrosis across the posterior capsule and some peripheral capsular uh, plaque as well using curettes both on the uh, undersurface of the anterior capsule and the posterior surface of the peripheral capsule um, much of this material is liberated and then changing my view to a stereocoaxial illumination the posterior capsule is punctured using a 27 gauge hypodermic needle the flap is grasped and uh, a short elaboration of the uh, capsular tear is created permitting visco dissection of the anterior hyoid. You can notice here the wave of visco dissection as it's propagated peripherally. It's also important to pressurize anterior to that as well with uh, viscoelastic. This is a cohesive product. And then the posterior capsule is elaborated using utrata forceps. It's important to note that the posterior capsular axis uh, is fairly similar in its vector forces with uh, some subtle yet important differences. Uh, the posterior capsule is more diaphanous and uh, more easily uh, uh, torn into shreds so some care is necessary and as you can see here in the subincisional region uh, going across these areas of fibrosis, extra care and uh, gentle maneuvers, short maneuvers of tearing are helpful to ensure that the capsule tear is indeed propagating in the direction that's desired. Uh, preferentially, one would polish the peripheral uh, posterior capsule just inside the anterior capsulotomy in order to remove these uh, fibrotic bands, however, um, these are indeed the reason why this is necessary. Uh, and once it's continuous and complete, additional cohesive viscoelastic inflates the capsular rim. A little pressure here, Mike. And a single piece of acrylic lens is delivered in a routine fashion, very uneventfully, uh, right into the capsular rim. Now once I have the haptics liberated, the optic is then prolapsed through the posterior capsular axis by simply slipping one side in first and then the other. Some slight maneuvering of the optic allows for the lens to center well. Uh, some additional Evacuation using a dry technique of uh, peripheral cortical material is uh, helpful. And it's amazing how stable this lens is. I've performed posterior capsulotomies on other patients without capture. And indeed, the lens does seem to want to prolapse and move around quite a bit. Uh, this capture technique makes things very stable. The
truck and lens power so far I have not uh, altered and I found to be having excellent results refractively this patient came out 2015 uncorrected from a preoperative vision of hand motion. Okay, we're all done. Everything went Thank very you. well.